Well, with me now is the Shadow Public Health Minister, Luciana Berger, and from New York, the columnist, Laurie Penny. Welcome to you both on the programme. Let me start with you, Luciana Berger. I mean, I'm a father of three young girls. The oldest one is 14, the youngest is 10, and I was pretty shocked by what some of those girls there had to say. I mean, we, after all, are supposed to live in the age of feminism. Um, a lot of these things should have been sorted out, but what they said there was quite shocking. What do you think? It was really shocking and I think people will be appalled to hear young people not know the distinction between yes being yes and no being no, that rape can only be taken a uh, place down a dark alley by a stranger, the fact that it might be acceptable for someone to be raped if they've had a drink, all of these issues uh, that young people think is acceptable kind of really raises I think the challenge that we face. But is that the failure of politicians for not being honest enough? Is it the failure of, of, of parents for not being honest enough? Is it the failure of society that has become far more sexualised at an earlier age? Age. I think there's lots of different roles that lots of different groups can play and, and parents obviously can play their part too but I want to see mandatory sex and relationship education in our schools and that's something that we pushed from the age of uh, well, I'd like to see it from primary schools right the way through. Uh, we already have personal health and social education, but there's no mandatory element at the moment. Ofsted have said actually the provision of sex and relationship education in our schools is pretty poor. Laurie Penny in New York. So here you have a politician saying they'd like to see mandatory sex education at a very young age. Have the politicians, in your view, done enough to be honest about this debate that seems to be taking place in every bedroom and not, not, every, not every kitchen? Well, of course not, because uh, one of the things that's true about contemporary politics is that nobody wants to go near the issue of sex and sex education because nobody wants to be the politician who says, well, maybe we should be telling young women that it's all right to have sex as long as they respect their own agency as long as they are respected. Nobody wants to be the politician that comes out in favour of things that maybe parents who don't want to hear. Um, I too think it's incredibly upsetting and shocking to hear young people saying that, for example, it was, was quoted on the programme, um, that women who have sex with one person shouldn't be respected by anybody else, that rape isn't rape if somebody has consented once, if somebody goes to a bedroom. But really, I think um, if, we, if we think that these are attitudes that are only held by teenagers, we're deceiving ourselves. These, there is an incredible amount of uh, slut shaming, of rape culture going on throughout society. You find many, many adults with these views. And this isn't something that can just be laid right. on politicians, but it's not something that can just be laid on teenagers either. So just to be clear, in your view, what should the age of consent be, for instance? Um, I'm not sure quite how we came on to the age of consent, but I think one thing that's clear from listening to these young people talk is that the question of whether or not it's legal to have sex isn't something that's really uh, on their minds uh, first and foremost. I think w rather than just talking to people and just telling young people that they shouldn't have sex, which is the which is as far as sex education goes, if you get it right now, we should be talking about what consent is, what it means to give consent to somebody, what enthusiastic consent should mean, right. and you know who is allowed to have and desire sex. One of the things that um, uh, I I found interesting about this discussion is we're still talking about sex as something that boys do to girls only and always something sex is something that boys take from women we're okay. not talking about women and young and young girls as wanting sex okay. and we're not talking about teenagers who might not be straight all right so Laurie Penny has essentially accused you as a politician Luciana Berger of being a bit too squeamish of not being honest enough about the subject what do you say to that well it was an amendment that Labour put to the children and families no, bill uh, we put down new clause 20 which specifically called for mandatory personal uh, and relationship education in our schools because we acknowledge the fact that actually we need to be doing something to equip young people with the information to make and empower them to be able to make choices that are both healthy and respectful. So what, in, your, in an ideal world should young people have less sex? I think the point is that they should be equipped with the information to have the confidence to make their own choices, again, which are, that, that is respectful of each other and they actually have the confidence to know what it is to be in a consensual relationship. It's quite evident from the video that we just saw that too many young people don't have that information at their fingertips and we should be equipping with them with that in our schools. Laurie Penny, can I ask you that when we get upset about Miley Cyrus twerking and, 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 and that sort of stuff, do we miss the point? It's not just about her, is it? It's, all, it's about society. 
Uh, well, uh, I'm personally not at all upset about Miley Cyrus twerking. I think uh, that uh, particular uh, manufactured moral panic is just evidence of the fact that we really, really like to talk about young women with their clothes off in society right now. I, uh, I think uh, the moral panic around young people having sex and behaving in a sexual way is in no way a new thing, uh, nor is this a fight between uh, politicians and people on the other side. It's interesting that you say I'm accusing Luciana of being squeamish. I'm not accusing Luciana of anything. Um, I don't want to be involved in the conversation where we just shout at each other more. Okay. Instead, we should be talking more to young people, empowering young people, and uh, not just trying to create false controversy where, where there is none here. Okay, well, well, it's not a shouting match, it's a decent conversation. Um, uh, Luciana, final question to you. Miley Cyrus, <laughs> should, we just, should we just ignore her? Is she, is she good or is she bad? What's your, what's your judgment on her? Uh, <laughs> I think this is this is a conversation that it's, it's, it goes much wider and deeper than Miley Cyrus. Actually, again, it comes back to equipping young people with the skills and with the confidence in order to approach relationships. And there's lots of other means by which young people are engaging the, in these things. Uh, you talk about how the conversation has moved on. We've got things like sexting now. We've got things like chat roulette and we have things like Snapchat, all mechanisms by which young people uh, need to have, again, the confidence to be dealing with relationships in a, in a, in a, in a, in a responsible way. But again, having that confidence to do so properly. Okay. Uh, uh, Luciana Berger and uh, rather distraught looking in Laurie Penny in New York. We've run out of time, I'm afraid. Thank you very much indeed.